Welcome to the multi taction Showcase Tutorial Series. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a teaser menu. A teaser menu floats across the display surface throughout the running time of the application. So let's review some of the key elements that are required to create a teaser menu. You'll notice if you've watched tutorials 3 and 4 that this is very similar to the finger menu setup, with one exception which is the behavior attribute. The behavior comes in two parts, float and fade. The float determines how the teaser menu moves across the screen and is set in two dimensions, literally X and Y. So if I have one and one, it will move down one unit of X and across one unit of Y in each movement. So if I put, for example, negative numbers in, I could have them moving up the screen and I could put have them moving left. So by default, they'll go from top left to bottom right, but you can create them to work any way you want. And in fact, if you create multiple teaser menus, which you can have, you might want them to move in different directions so that it makes the display more interesting and attractive for people to come and interact with the content. The fade attribute determines how essentially it blinks because the icon that you choose to have as the teaser menu icon can fade in and out as it moves across the screen. And again, this just makes things more interesting to look at. Once somebody touches that teaser menu, you're going to open up a menu just like you would the finger menu that we defined in tutorial three. And so you have the same things to set up. You have to set up a content set, which so what you will see when you press that menu option and how that looks when you touch it is governed by the bubble type. And of course, again, just like the diagram here on the right hand side, you've got the connectors as well that will come from that icon, which is the teaser menu. So let's jump into the editor and take a look at how you set up a teaser menu. So as you'll remember from previous tutorials, if you want to create something to run inside the application, we probably need to be in the structure. So I've selected structures here from the main menu. And if I look down the list, here's my tutorial structure. So let's open that up. Here's the finger menu we created in tutorial three and the background that we popped on in tutorial one. So let's have a look at adding a teaser to the main. Simply click to add a new widget and here's all the widgets that are available to me. And down the list, we see the teaser menu. So let's go ahead and add that. So once I've done that, let's click save and we'll see the options I've got here on the right hand side. So straight away, there's two of the items we just discussed in the key elements. And here's another one, which is how many teaser instances do you want? Now, this is just for this teaser menu. You can have multiple instances of a teaser menu. So if I set, for example, this number in here to three, which is what I shall do, then I will have three of these teaser menus floating across the screen at any one time. You can have multiple teaser menus and you can have multiple versions of a teaser menu. So I could have three separate teaser menus in here, each of them with three instances. So I'd have nine teaser menus floating across the screen at once. You can have them all set up differently. So you could have, for example, one teaser menu that just takes you into corporate information. You could have one teaser menu that just takes you into videos or maybe a specific product set. And you can have a different icon for each one and you can change the behavior of each one. There's a lot of flexibility in here. Okay, so that's the number of instances. Now we need a menu for it. And just like we've done in the past, we'll go ahead and create a new one. And let's go ahead and save. Next, we'll set up the teaser behavior. So again, let's create a new one. And here's my two options you'll remember from the overview. So I can control the fade in and out and I control the floating behavior. So in this case, I want to change the floating behavior. So let's go ahead and add one of those. So here we go, the multi action tutorial floating. And again, remember, naming is important here to help find the right ones. So let's go ahead and save. Right, let's first of all edit the behavior. So content speed determines how quickly that icon moves across the screen. 
I don't really typically change this from the default unless I'm working on a really big display where I think having the icon move a little quicker adds a little bit more interest. And also, the other thing to bear in mind is if you're doing a really big video wall, it's worth having more instances because, again, it keeps things moving. It's more interesting on the display. So I'm going to let that default here. The direction shift and change which determines how it moves across the display is set here. The default is 1 and 0 0.8. So for every unit down on the uh, y-axis it will move across x 0 0.8 on the on the x-axis. So I'm pretty comfortable with this for right now. Let's go ahead and save. So just like when we added finger menus there's no content behind this right now. We literally have just set up the infrastructure for it. So let's go ahead and set up the content to go behind this menu. So here I am back in the editor and I'm looking at the teaser menu. And you can see the type of widget is a finger menu, which is exactly the same type we set up in tutorials three and four. And again, my options here are rotate towards hand and we can ignore that because that's for a table we're still going to a wall um, the menu timeout remember I like things to go pretty quickly I'm still going to leave that as default of 10 seconds but I do need a content set defined so here's one that I already set up which is the multi-taction tutorial teaser menu so let's go ahead and put that in again naming conventions really help and I'm okay I'm just going to default the opening animation so let's go ahead and save that. Right, let's go and look at the content set here and let me show you what I've actually put in. So what I have here is a series of PDFs. Now those of you who've watched tutorial 4 will know that I can control the way all of these PDFs work by putting settings into the theme and that's precisely what I've done here. These are all PDF files so they're going to default to the PDF book and I've set the PDF book to behave a certain way. You'll see when we do a quick uh, test in the application how that looks. These have all been set to uh, to complete defaults, so uh, we'll be able to see in a minute what that looks like. But before we do, we need to make sure that the preview images work well, because you'll remember from the finger menu, if we don't do anything at all, they'll simply look like uh, blank circles. And the way we do that is we set the finger menu options down here to the bubble type. Now I want them to look just like my finger menu options. So I'm going to go ahead and utilize the tutorial bubble level one uh, bubble type we set up. And again, um, you'll notice that as you go through this, the more things you set up, the more things are already defined inside of these options. So I'm not having to create this again. I can simply reuse it. Even though I used it in a different application, perhaps not even necessary list this one or a different part of this one, I can still reuse it. And it's it's items like that that make using the editor so fast, because if you've got things set up, the very first application you do will take you a little while. But as you do more applications, it'll get quicker and quicker because you'll find yourself just reusing settings that you've put in before. So let's go ahead and, and save that. And I'm going to quickly go through and set those bubble types for those options and then we'll do a quick test in the application. Okay, so here we are inside the application and here are my floating teasers going across the screen. And you'll notice they're blinking, sort of getting smaller and larger as part of the fade in and fade out that we left to default. So if I touch one of these now, here are my PDF documents uh, coming from the content that we set for the finger menu. And so um, this is where my PDF defaults are now set in the theme. And so what I've done is I've automatically pinned these, which means they won't move. And it means I can use them just like an animated book to read the PDF. And this is a really powerful way of showing PDF documents. Now, if I leave that for five seconds, it will time out just like that. Or I could use the close button uh, that I put on there as a, as a default as well. So there you have it. Those are the floating teaser menus moving across the display. And remember, the teaser behavior is what determines how those things move. So let's quickly review what we did back in the editor. So here I am back in the editor and you can see in the structure 
all the things that we've added across the previous tutorials. So we have the finger menu, we've just put in our teaser menu, and we've got the movie background. Let's go ahead and look at what we set up in the teaser menu. We decided we've had, we'd have three instances floating across the screen. For those of you that watched the previous tutorials on finger menu, this would have seemed very straightforward because we just put in literally a finger menu as the menu control. And then we set the floating content behavior. We let the fade in and out default, and we change the movement behavior by changing the X and Y uh, numbers of unit between movements. And here are the content sets that have been defined, and here's my uh, teaser menu right here. If I expand that, you can see the PDF assets, and remember that this was controlled from the theme. So all of the PDF assets appear the same way. They were pinned, you couldn't rotate them, and you could just flick through them like a PDF book and they would close by themselves in five seconds, or you could close them with the X. So that concludes this tutorial on how to create a teaser menu. Thanks for watching.